Okay. Hello, this is Apostle Charlene Allen, and that's the fabulous, your teacher actually, <laughs> fabulous Teresa Escobar, and she will be bringing you a mighty word, a powerful word, any word coming from the Bible is powerful, so she will pray, and the next voice you hear will be evangelists to get the souls of the men and women. Ready for me to pray? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so excited. Okay, let's pray. Let's let's start to get in prayer. Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness because you are a good God. And there is there is no bad in you, God. You are all good, 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 good. And we ask, Lord God, that you anoint our ears to hear what you are saying to us. That you, um, as we open our mouths, that you will fill it, Father, in the name of Jesus, and that you will have spoken what you want spoken today, Lord God. Touch the hearers and seers of this video, Lord God, and, and, and just really draw them closer to you, Father, because it's about relationship. Relationship with you, Father, that is what it's all about. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Ooh. Well, hello. Hello there. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm just. She's I'm a happy silly. camper this morning. <laughs> I'm just being silly. It's a good day. I'm glad. The Lord gave me was, will you trust me? Will you trust me? Question mark. And I'm going to have Apostle Charlene read from Proverbs 3 and 5 on the, and 6 on the Amplified Version. Hit it. 3, 5, and 6. <laughs> 3, 5, and 6? Mm -hmm. Oh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> like 3, 5, and 6? Trust in the Lord. And uh, I better read it in this version. Trust and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight and understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him and he will make your path straight and smooth removing obstacles that block your way so proverbs 3, yeah you got it mom mm -hmm. so proverbs 3 you got it that i did good. yeah okay. <laughs> i'm all over the place i feel like a buddy anyways <laughs> silly today god asked a question Will you trust me? And I've had trust issues with God mm -hmm. for in the beginning when I'm in my relationship with them. And I probably still do in certain areas, but I believe he's breaking those walls of distrust by the word of God and by the Holy Spirit and by his actions. And his record is, 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 is spotless. And what I mean by that, by his record being spotless, meaning he says what he says and he does it. And he he doesn't fail. None of his words fail. In Numbers 23, verse 19, let me know if, are you going there, Apostle? You can go ahead. Okay. In Numbers 23, verse 19, it says, God is not a man. So he's not a man. God is a spirit. And that is in John, I'll tell you real quick. John 4, 14, 24, John 4, 24, for God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So first of all, we know that God is not a man, but he's a spirit. So he does not lie. He is not human. He's not like us. We're in a fleshy suit, a fleshy body. So he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? I Meaning, has he ever spoken and not done what he said? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Think about your life and think about the things that the Lord has told you. Has he not done it? Has he failed you? I can look back in my life and he's done everything that he's ever said to me that he would do. He's come through for me all the time. It may not be when I would want it. You know, people say, you know, there's a song. What's that song? He may not come through when I want it, but he's on. He's an on-time God. Mm. He's an on-time God, but he comes on time. 
but his timing is perfect. We have to understand that. And so will you trust him? Will you trust him with what he says that he will do for you? Will you trust him with your life? Will you trust him with your finances? Now that's a big one. You know, people are funny about their money, <laughs> but will you trust them with your finances? Will you trust them to take care of you? Will you trust them to provide for you? Food, clothing, shelter, a job. Will you trust them to take care of you, to protect you from the enemy, from yourself? Will you trust them? Will you trust them to that prophecy that you got or that word that you got from him from a long time ago, like 20 years ago, or that vision he gave you 20 years ago, will you trust him to fulfill it in his time? Will you trust him? And God, God has to remind me because he gave me a vision of my total healing of my mind and my soul over 20 plus years ago. I saw the whole thing. It was like real life. I saw my total healing and deliverance. And he's like, don't forget what I showed you. Will you trust me to do what I showed you? And I knew it was from God because it was embed it's embedded in my memory. It's like, it's like branded in my memory, in my mind, what that vision he showed me. And so what has God told you to where the circumstances outside circumstances make it seem that it's not so but you know this is what god told you you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. and so do you waver yeah we waver you know we kind of bend to the left and bend to the right bend to the back bend to the front like a tree going into the going with the wind <laughs> but are we uprooted is our is our roots uprooted from the lord and from his word no but you do waver you go but uh but then you get yourself in check and you said, no, I'm not going to doubt. I'm going to believe his word. And that's the decision. That's a decision you have to make. Just like following, following Christ and being a disciple of Christ, that's a decision you have to make. And you have to stick with that decision. Well, I mean, you can fall back if you want to, but that wouldn't be a good thing for your soul or for, your, for you, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, in your soul. But God wants to know, will you trust him? And um, I have this plaque. It's a cross with the footprints in the sand pole. Nobody knows who the author is. But I have this plaque on my, it's right here, right? I know you can't see it, but it's right here in front of me. And I printed it off and I want to read it. And I want, um, we'll go over it. You ready, Apostle? Yep. Okay. It says, one, before I start, you have anything to say, Mom? No, go ahead. Okay. You have a roll. <laughs> You're funny. It says footprints in the sand. One night I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky. In each scene, I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints. Other times there was one only. This bothered me because I noticed that during the low periods of my life, when I was suffering from anguish, sorrow, or defeat, I could see only one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord in the dream that if I follow, you promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I have noticed that during the most trying periods of my life, there has only been one set of footprints in the sand during the hard times, during the, the crushing. Why, when I needed you most, have you not been there for me? And the Lord replied, the times when you have seen only one set of footprints, my child, is when I carried you. And again, um, the author is unknown of this poem. And so even though we go through hard times, even though there's times of anguish and times of despair and we think God has left us, there's a song by Donnie McClurkin says, do you trust me? Will you, do you trust me? No, I will trust you. That's what it's called. I will trust you. And in the song, some of the lyrics say, what if you don't feel me near you? Will you trust me? What if you don't hear me near you? Will you trust me? It's like when everything is blank, everything is dark, when you don't sense God, when you don't feel his presence, when you don't hear his 
his small still voice and when you don't see him you don't see him in in your life in your circumstances moving will you still trust him Will you know that he's got your six, he's got your back. We did a session on that a while back because God's got your six, means he's got your back. But he also got your forward, your sides, your top, your bottom. He's got you encircled all around. Will you trust him when you don't feel him, when you don't hear him, when you don't sense him? Will you trust him because you got the only thing you got is the letter of the word to hold on to? Will you trust him? Do you believe what he's saying to you is true? Or do you think, oh, wow, he's just like man. But I just read to you a number that God is not a man, so he does not lie. He's not a man. He's not like us. And, and he doesn't lie. What he says is true. What you got, Apostle? I know you got something. No, you're doing good, but uh, I can always say something. <laughs> say something. Say something. Go on. Um, do 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 you trust God? I, I always say uh, trust is like a pie. Um, you don't eat the whole pie at once. You cut it in pieces and you eat by slice. And that's how trust happens, by slice. Uh, we can fully trust God in one area and fully distrust God in another area. Uh, God, taking one piece at a time until the whole pie is fulfilled is is our steps towards total trust in God. And we have to learn to give him pretty much the whole pie. He wants it all. He wants it all, but he's he's not like man, if you don't give it him all, he's gonna not gonna have a temper tantrum and withhold himself because you're not giving your all. He's still gonna give his all. Um trust is one thing that um I deal with a lot in the pastorate where People's trust is shattered and they retaliate and they do things out of mistrust. And when people are act, have been hurt and the enemy has shattered their trust, we can't take those things personal. Uh, we have to really just stay with people and stand with people even when they act like what I call a donkey. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you knew it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my word. <laughs> um, but do I trust God? I tr I trust. I mean, that scripture is the, I have it on my wall and it is my go-to scripture. When I don't have anything else to preach, I can preach that word <laughs> because I had to trust them. I remember one time going to a party and I had just left something in and I was going to a party. These people were going out of town, going out of country and you know, on missions. And they wanted me to come to pray over them. And um, I was like, I'm not hearing anything. You know, that place where you said where it's dark and it's black. It was dark and black. I, it was so dark. There were no crickets there. Oh, wow. <laughs> and as I'm driving and I'm, I'm seeking the Lord for this word and even as though everyone around the room was ping-ponging around the room and saying words, they kept me for last. I still saw nothing but darkness. And I was like, you know, I stood up and I was more than willing to say, look, guys, I don't have nothing, you know. But as I stood up, I opened my mouth and God began to fill it. And the people that I was speaking this to, they began to weep because they said, there's no way that you could have known that I had told no one. And so even in darkness, do you trust God, even if you don't see it and everyone else is dependent on you, you're not going to give a fake word or say something that's out of left pocket because you don't want to lose faith. If I would have opened my mouth and I would have said, look, I ain't have nothing. I would have been just as good as opening my mouth and him filling it with whatever he wanted to. Do you trust God like that in the times of darkness, in the time when you don't even know what to say? You don't even know how to say it. You don't even know how to put your your mind around it. Do you trust him? I mean, do you trust him in life and death situations? I was on a head on car accident and a guy came out and he said, man, all you could do is hold on and pray. I said, no, 
No, all I could do was pray and hold on. I trust them that much that prayer has to come first before I hold on. Will you trust God enough to put him first, even in situations where you are damaged? And I was damaged in that head on car accident, but I knew I saw it coming. All I could do was pray and say, God, you got this. Do you trust God in a head on collision? Do you trust him? That's good, Apostle. Go ahead. No, that's good. I, that, that's enough. I'll let you finish here. You know, I saw a bit where you were talking about trusting God in, in pieces of pie and a piece of pie, different pieces and segments. I saw like, you know how when you're, okay, let's say you're standing and your back is faced towards someone and you're like, um, they tell you to, to let yourself go and go back and you got to trust the person in back of you because your eyes are to catch you. Mm-hmm. you know to fall back and trust the person in back of you so think of yourself as the person who's who's in front of that person and your eyes are closed and you gotta let yourself go and trust that God's got you in every se- segment of your life in every situation of your life and one of the segments and situations in my life was finances and God, I'd be like, or provision, I should say, you know, how am I going to pay my bills? How is the Lord going to take care of me? I struggled with that for many years. And one day I was sitting um, in my room by myself and just sitting before the Lord and just crying and talking to him and tell him how I was feeling about, Lord, how are you going to provide for me? How are you going to take care of me? You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, first of all, he's been doing it thus far. That's the first thing. <laughs> and so I'm thinking of the future, like, oh my gosh, Lord, how are you going to do it? And he told me, he says, don't worry, I'll take care of you. I heard his still small voice in my spirit. And he said, don't worry, I'm going to take care of you. And for some reason, it hit me different. Mm. It was like I was more calm. And I receive what he, I think it's because I really receive what he said in my heart mm-hmm. that he's got me. He's going to take care of me. And that just really sealed something in me where I'm not so worried like I used to be. I'm more confident in his ability. Like, you know, God is a great God. You know, <laughs> with us that make him like this, we make him much small. But I trust in his ability to take care of me and to watch over me and to protect me. You know, so that was a real big step for me. And even with my mind, you know, because everyone everyone who's been following us know that I have been diagnosed with schizophrenia affective disorder, a mental disorder. And through my years, over 20 plus years, 22 plus years, I've had to learn to trust God with my healing and my deliverance. In the beginning, I, I've, I've spoken about this before. It was like they were ravaging my mind. They were raping my mind every day, 24 seven. It's not as bad as that, but it's still there. And sometimes it seems like they're raping my mind, but I'm learning to trust them for the total deliverance and healing of my mind. Because if one, he told me in his word that I have the mind of Christ, which I have now today. And I'm healed by the blood of Jesus, which was done over 2000 years ago. I have to continue to believe and have faith that that manifestation of that healing is going to come through, which it will in his timing. Mm -hmm. And because he showed it to me in a vision. He showed my total healing and deliverance in my mind with my mind in a vision. Now he didn't have to show that to me, but I'm, this is just me talking. I'm thinking he's like, she's gonna go through hell and back with her mind. So I gotta show her something. So that way at that time she can hold on to that as well as hold on to the word and and hold on to his promises, you know? And so you might be going through a dark phase in your life right now where your mind is being attacked, where your emotions are up and down, where your livelihood is unknown, 
you know, there's so many things where your, your living situation may be unknown. But God says, will you trust me in, a, in, a, in, in the segments of the pie, in the pieces of the pie? Will you trust me? Will you take hold of my promises that I've either spoken to you through my word or through the Holy Spirit? Will you trust me? And I know I keep saying that, will you trust me? But that way, so we can get it. <laughs> you know, sometimes people repeat things so that we can get it. So we can really get it and take hold of it and call it as our own, as or take ownership of, yes, I will trust you, Lord. You know, I don't know. I was homeless. I was in a mental institution for almost two months, a month, something like that. I don't even remember it. Month, I would say. I lost my home. I didn't have no money. My parents, I had I was estranged from my parents for over 13 years. I haven't talked to them in 13 years. I, and uh, I just got out the military and served 13 years in the military. I was literally by myself in a mental institute in North Carolina, and I'm from Arizona. And the voices were all so overbearing and so ravaging. I didn't know anybody in the, I did, I, my friend, I had a friend, a close friend in North Carolina who was like maybe a couple of hours away, but she was, she, she was like doing her thing. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't, I couldn't depend on her. And I, I had to learn during that, those dark moments that I had to depend on God. There was no one else I could depend, no one else I can talk to, no one else I can trust. It was only God. And actually she called my parents somehow. She got their number. I don't know how. And they came to North Carolina. Remember I was estranged from them for 13 years since the year, the years I was in the military. They came and got me and brought me back to Arizona. That was God. Did I trust them? And you know what I asked my friend in, in North Carolina when she came to visit me one time? Do you think God's in Arizona? Mm. <laughs> I, I didn't know. I didn't know if God was in Arizona. She says, yes, yes, he's in her. And, and he paid, and he gave me a word. Let me tell you what it is, because this is, he even brings it back to me and says, this is why I told you what I told you. He gave me a word in Psalm 18, 18 through 19. And it says this, and this is before everything happened, before everything started spiraling down. And he gave me this word, Psalms 18, verse 18 through 19. This is they attack, this is David talking. It says, they attacked me at a moment when I was in distress. I was in distress. I had a mental breakdown. But the Lord supported me. And I looked at that. I, I look at it now. But at the time, I was like, supported me? Where was you? You know, like, Job, where was you? <laughs> I don't, I didn't feel you. I didn't hear you. I didn't, I didn't see you. But he said he supported me. He led me to a place of safety, which was Arizona. He rescued me because he delights in me. He delighted in me. That shocked me. I was like, he delighted in me? Then, But he supported me. I said, Lord, how did you support me during my darkest moment? It could have been worse. I could have been dead. I could have been, they could have killed me. I could have, it could have been worse. When I was molested by a family member, it could have been worse. He showed, he told me that it could have been worse by my hands. My hands stayed that situation. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, you're right. It could have been worse. Mm -hmm. Being in the military, it could have been worse. I was, I was in the Marines. Now that's a man's man part of the military. <laughs> it could have been worse. But he stayed the hand, his hands stayed it, the situations that I was in there. And so I just, I just want to encourage you that no matter what it feels like, seems like, tastes like, smells like, whatever you want to call it, trust God to get you through. Trust in, in his word, in his word, in the Bible, but trust in the word that he gives you himself personally. 
trust his voice, trust him. Whatever he may say to a, a, another person, his prophets or whoever, who, you know, he might send someone your way to speak a word in your life during a time that you don't know which way is up or down, you know, and just trust God, just trust him. And it's like uh, Apostle said, it's like little segments of a pie until one day you'll be like, oh, he got the whole pie. He has a whole pie and, and, and nothing will phase you because you'll be, you'll have faith, strong faith in him and trust in him. Trust is about relationship. Do you have relationship with the Lord? Are you in relationship with him? Are you in intimacy with him? Do I trust you to take care of me? Do I trust you to provide for me? Do I trust you? Do I trust you? Yes, Lord, I trust you. And, and, and it's, it's like a child trusts the mommy and the daddy to take care of them. They have no care in the world. They shouldn't because mommy and daddy will take care of them. You know, I want to say sometimes our mommies and daddies, our fathers aren't like our heavenly father to where we can't trust them because they've hurt us or broken us in some way or whatever it may be. But our heavenly father, he's, he'll treat us right. He treats us right. He won't break us. He won't hurt us. He won't talk negative to us. He builds us up. He makes us whole. And I had a negative viewpoint of God for a long time. Because my father was, had, was just his, my perception of my earthly father was distorted because of the way he acted. But he didn't know no better either because of how he was raised, you know? And so I had to learn that my heavenly father is not like my earthly father. And I had to, I had to say, Yes, God, I trust you. Even though I didn't believe my earth, even though I knew my earthly dad didn't have my back, I had to believe that my heavenly father had my back, that he would take care of me. Mm -hmm. And so I just really, the viewers who are listening, who are watching this um, broadcast to know that God wants you to trust him. He's not a man that he should lie. Know that he doesn't lie. Whatever he says is truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Go ahead, Apostle. One thing I, you know, you keep telling them about trust and you keep pointing here. A lot of people trust here. Mm -hmm. And trusting here isn't going to make it. Because if you've lost your mind, there's, there's no way that you're going to have the mind to process what needs to be happening to trust them. It has to come from your heart because out of the heart flows the issues of life, right? Not you, out of the mind. You know what? Go ahead. <laughs> you said that. And that's what the Lord was telling me before we started because he was showing me. I said, trust, what do you mean? Because if you trust in me, out of the heart flows the issues of life. You trust me with your heart. Mm -hmm. So you, you're spot on, Apostle. I just wanted to i'm glad i i'm glad the scripture spot on <laughs> <laughs> um the only way that we can walk like that is if it's a heart if we have to have a heart change because our mind can tell us all sorts of things and, and many times those things are are shaded by our life experiences by our hurts even by our successes we, our mind can have a way of rationalizing why we should or should not trust because we've seen it before because, because, because our mind will tell us all these sorts of things, but our heart dedicated to God and moved by the spirit of God, he's spirit of truth and truth sets you free. And so flowing out of a, a true heart given over to Christ uh, for that relationship, as Teresa said, will make, will supersede your mind. Um, we have to be driven by our heart and our heart can change our mind. And so as Teresa says, we do have the mind of Christ. Now you say, how can she have the mind of Christ and still hear voices? That doesn't make sense. I mean, once you're saved, he gets all of you. 
he does get all of you, but but at the same time, you have a flesh, and that flesh has a personality. And in those personalities, there's areas that, that we don't submit at all. And so those are the areas where demonic can come in and infiltrate and begin to take those things. It's, this is my time, we say. And in those times when you say this is mine, those are the very areas that are not submitted to God. And that's how you really didn't give them all of you, but you have all of him. He doesn't give you a piece. He doesn't give you a piece. And it doesn't matter what age you are. You don't get a piece of the Holy Spirit. You don't get a piece of God. He gives you him all of himself. Now, your mind can't wrap wrap that around because all seems like the container's full. God is so good that he can be give you his all and still have some other stuff left in you that's that's not consumed. But because of God, because of trusting him, even those areas that you have not submitted to God, as as Teresa said, it would be worse for you if God's hand was removed. Even in the areas you haven't submitted to him, if God had removed his hand, you would be dead in this thing. But because all of him is there, he's going to hover over that. And he's going to be changing that mindset, changing that until you res- re- resist the devil and he flees. And now God comes in like a consuming fire and takes that, that space that has been voided and he's right there to consume it. You Do you trust God like that, that even with the issues in life, do you trust him that he's hovering over your issues, waiting for you to say, God, I surrender. And at that point, He can take that away and now that thing is gone and now he's got it all. That's trust. That's trust. You know, there's a song. I'm not going to sing it, okay? (laughs) It's called He Wants It All by Forever Jones. Mm -hmm. You can look it up on on iTunes or Amazon. And it's basically saying he wants all of you. He wants all of you. Just like Apostle said, he gave his all. He didn't give us 10% or 30% of himself. He was all he's, He was all in. Mm-hmm. He's all in. As soon as we said, yes, Lord, come into my heart. I believe that you died, Jesus, and rose again on the third day. He sent his Holy Spirit as a deposit. Not part of the Holy Spirit, but his whole spirit. The Holy Spirit. All of him in us. He's like, I'm all in, you know, we don't gamble, but you know how they say I'm all in. They put all the chips on the table and say, I'm all in. Well, that's what Jesus said. He said, I'm all in. But like she was saying, like Apostle was saying, it takes time. It it takes, it takes time. It takes trust. It takes work, not work like fleshy work, but it just, what I mean by work, I mean, it, it takes time, you know, as he does, as you see, he's trustworthy in this and you go a little bit a little bit farther and you see it's trustworthy in that okay you go a little bit farther you give more of yourself to him does that make sense Mm -hmm. you know so just know that god loves you okay peter thank you lord peter jesus walking on water who has ever walked on water jesus walked on water peter's in the boat with the with some other people other fishermen and Peter's a fisherman, and they all see with the disciples, and they all see Jesus walking on water. And they're like, Oh my God, it's a ghost. And he's like, No, it's not a ghost. It's me. It's me, Jesus. Peter says, If it's you, call me out to you. Call me out. Call me, call me forward to you. Call me out to you. And so Jesus says, Come, come on, man. Get off the boat and come on. And Peter, by faith and trust, he stepped out on the water and he started walking on the on the water towards Jesus. Now, where he messed up, and we're all some of it, where we all mess up at times is where we start. The wind was blowing, and it was just like the waves were high while he was walking on the water towards Jesus. And he took his eyes off Jesus and he started looking at his circumstances. The wind is blowing, the waves are high. And so he lost his viewpoint of the Lord. And so that's when he sunk. And the Lord grabbed him. I think he said, why do you have so little faith? If I'm not mistaken. Oh, ye of little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. 
or ye of little trust, or ye of little faith. And I, so even we in get, that, go ahead. Huh? So, go ahead. And sometimes we're that way. Sometimes we, we, we get consumed by our circumstances and what's going on around us that we lose our faith and trust in the Lord and we fall. Even though we fall, he's still there to pick us back up. Either way, it's a win-win situation with the Lord. Either way, either if we fall, it's still a win-win situation because he's there to pick us up. We stand, he's there right by us. He's there, right, right there with us. So God is asking you, will you trust him? That's what he's asking. Will you trust him? Will you trust me? Me meaning him, not me, not Teresa. Don't, don't do that because I'm not Jesus. Far from it. So you got anything, Apostle? I was saying when Peter walked on the, got out the boat, he did a spiritual thing. But when he began to look around, he began to do the natural thing. And so when we start doing our natural thing, we're going to fall and sink every time. We have to be spiritual. Spiritual, spiritual things happen when we remain spiritual. We can walk on water. We can have the supernatural um, a lot of people say, well, supernatural stuff only happens when you go abroad on missions trips. That ain't my life. Supernatural stuff happens all the time. Every time you step out on faith, the supernatural happens. Like Teresa said, is God in Arizona? <laughs> you know, is God in America? It doesn't look like it sometimes, but he's here. He's here and he's strong and he's doing signs and wonders. You don't have to go abroad on, on you know, missions, trips to, to finally move in God. No, get out your comfort zone. That's your mission. And when you get out your comfort zone, that's your mission trip. And then you'll see the supernatural. God wants all of us to walk on water. But do we have faith to get out the boat? Amen. Do we have faith and do we have trust in the Lord? That he is going to carry us through all the way. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just going to leave you with this one thing. Do you trust him? That one question. And I, I'm not just saying that for you all who are listening, but I'm saying it for myself too. You know, before the Lord has us, and, and I, I believe this is what the apostle too. If I'm wrong, let me know. But before he gives us anything, it's for us first. Mm -hmm. He ministers to us as well as he ministers to you. And I always pray, I said, Lord, I got to hear from you. What do you want to say to us? It has to come from you. I cannot do it. And he asked, so what do you want me and the viewers to know about you or to learn or to hear or whatever, to grasp? And so do you trust them? What you got, Apostle? What's your last word? I would say what you just said also. Are you all in? Don't, don't trust partial because partial trust is mistrust are you all in give him give him all of something and it can be something small but 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 valuable give him that and 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 watch him take that and let him build on that small thing until you can trust him with the big thing because i tell you he won't fail he will not he will not fail. Failure to us looks like it's not done on time. Our time. But even, even if I die, God is going to fulfill the promise because he's, he's going to do it. You can look at Hebrews 11. There are a lot of things that people didn't see in their lifetime, but it came to pass. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean that God didn't do it. So trust. Yeah. And I'll finish off with one more thing. The Another finish for you. <laughs> the scripture numbers 23. Just a reminder, verse 19. God is not a man, so he does not lie. He's not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? That's a question for you and for me. Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Again, a question for you and for me. And um just know that God is faithful and he's worthy of all our trust. Apostle, can you end us up in prayer? So, Father, the first thing that we have to do to trust you is to trust you with our heart. It's a heart issue. 
So I pray if there's any viewer who haven't taken that step of trust, of saying, Lord, I'm in a mess right now, and I, I can't even trust myself. But something these ladies said, if, if I can just take a little part and just trust you with a little piece of my heart, and you come in and be the Lord of my little piece of heart, I'm all in. I want to trust you. I want to trust you as Lord. I want to trust you as Savior. Father, forgive me for the sins that I've done is all you have to say. And he is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sin and all your trespasses. Make Jesus the Lord of your life. That's the first step of trust, to die to yourself in your situation so that Christ can live in that situation and give you power to arise and become new. That is the ultimate mm -hmm. test of trust, to trust God with your heart. Now, if you've trusted God with your heart, do you trust God with your actions? Do you give every act? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, all these acts that you're trying to do, he will do it. He knows what we have need of. So the action we have to take is to trust God, seek God first. Is that going to be your, your act today? To trust God instead of cussing people out? To trust God instead of using your mind and giving them a peace of mind, which is pretty jacked anyway? <laughs> will you give them a, a mind so that he can give you the mind of Christ? Father, we thank you for this word, because truly, we have to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, not lean on our own understanding, but we have to acknowledge you, and, and we want to acknowledge you in salvation, we want to acknowledge you in our action, and it is then that you promise that you will direct our path. So we thank you for this word, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll see you next week on how we get our mind back. It starts with your heart. Amen. Amen. God bye. bless you. Bye-bye.